Good morning. I asked Eric if I could share a joy, so I'd like to boast in the Lord. Several times a day I sat on my deck and I talked to God in worship. As I was seeking peace and rejoicing over my 53 years with Mary Jane, God gave me a revelation. A monarch butterfly threw my yard to the butterfly bush for a week. Now, when I asked God to send me the monarch with a few in a few minutes, it flies into the yard. God is awesome. I am overwhelmed by Jesus' love. I am so grateful he gave me Mary Jane to love. It amazes me that I am less than a grain of sand on a beach in this vast universe of his. And compared to the large universe, it seems like I am nothing, yet he knows every hair on my head. He has blessed me abundantly. All praise, honor, and glory to the living God, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Let us pray. Forgiving God, like Jonah, we resist when asked to tell the story. We find it hard to share our faith and the gospel message. We are awkward and feel inadequate. But you have called us to speak and to act. Like those fishermen you called along the lake shore, help us to rise up and follow wherever you lead. Let us share the gospel in word and deed. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen.
Good morning. Today our story is a familiar one about Jonah and the big fish. For me, it's easy to get caught up in this story by the picture of this big fish swallowing Jonah and what the inside of a big fish would look like, what it would feel like, and most importantly, what it would smell like. With all these pictures in my head, it's easy to miss some of the important points of Jonah's story. Often people focus on the point that Jonah was trying to run away from God, and that, of course, no matter where we go, we can never run away from God. But today, I would like to talk about why Jonah was trying to run away from God. Jonah was a preacher, and God wanted him to go preach to the people of Nineveh that they would be destroyed in 40 days because of their evil ways. Jonah didn't want to go because he greatly disliked, and I don't think hated would be too strong a word, Jonah hated the Nineveh people. They were enemies of Jonah's people, the Israelites, and they had a long history of fighting. The Israelites considered them to be very evil and cruel people. Jonah knew that if he preached to them, God would be merciful and not destroy them in 40 days. And Jonah would really rather have them destroyed than he and the Israelites, and then he and the Israelites would never have to deal with them again. That makes me think of how God might want us to use this story today in our own lives. Jesus tells us we are to love our enemies and pray for them. Do you, like Jonah, have someone you have to deal with on a regular basis that you have a really hard time dealing with, much less loving? Someone you really don't like, maybe a classmate or a neighbor, or it could be a group of kids who are mean or make fun of you. Like Jonah, we may have a really hard time loving our enemies. One thing I've found helpful is to specifically pray for that person or that group of people and let God do the work of changing my heart. I would like to invite the children, and the grown-ups too, of course, to pray daily for that person or group of people for the next 30 days. You may have no idea what to pray, so just bring them up to the Lord and let him guide you. You may want to share with a person such as a parent or close friend or Pastor Eric what you are doing. At the end of 30 days, which would be September 15th, consider how you feel about those you have been praying for and share with your partner any changes you've noticed. If you try this, I would also love to hear from you and what your experience was like. Let's close with prayer. Dear God, we know you want us to love others and that sometimes others are very hard for us to love. Please change our hearts so we can better understand how you love all those you have created. Amen. The story of Jonah and the whale comes from Jonah chapters 1 through 3. Jonah was a prophet of God. One day, God told Jonah, go to the big city of Nineveh. Tell them to stop doing bad things. But Jonah ran away. He did not want to go to Nineveh. Instead, he got on a boat to sail across the sea. God sent a big storm to stop Jonah. The sailors on the boat were afraid. They thought the boat was going to sink. Jonah told the sailors, my God has sent this storm. If you throw me into the water, the sea will become calm again. So the sailors threw Jonah into the raging sea. Instantly, the sea became calm. Just then, Jonah saw a big fish coming. Oh, the fish swallowed Jonah. For three days and nights, Jonah was inside the fish. He prayed to God, please forgive me. Then God told the fish to spit Jonah onto dry land. God told Jonah a second time, go and tell the people of Nineveh to stop doing bad things. This time, Jonah obeyed God. The people in Nineveh were sorry for doing bad things, so God forgave them. Do you remember how the story of Jonah and the whale, Jonah and the fish, begins? It seems simple enough, right? God told Jonah to do something. Jonah decides he isn't going to do that thing. But he goes even further. 
Instead of doing that thing that God wants him to do, Jonah, in some ways, does the opposite. Or at least he heads in the opposite direction from that place that God wants him to go. Now Jonah had good reason for his perspective on the situation, for his running. As Miss Wynn shared with us during the children's message, that thing that God was telling him to do wasn't an easy thing. It wasn't a likable thing. It wasn't something he would have chosen to do had it not been for God's call. In fact, it would have been a thing that was so very troubling that he likely would have had to convince his body to move in that direction that God wanted him to. He probably would have been afraid to go and speak a message to Israel's enemies. That would have been fearful for him uncomfortable. It seemed like too much for God to ask him to do. Jonah was knowledgeable, but I wonder as I experience this story again, I wonder if he depended on his knowledge and his intellect, his reason, just a little bit too much. And if that knowledge hindered his willingness to listen to the call that God was placing upon him. You see, Jonah knew that if he went, if he did that thing that God wanted him to do, that because of who God was, God would forgive the Ninevite people if they repented and if they were sorrowful for the ways that they were living. Jonah knew that God would forgive them, that God was likely to give them a second chance. You see, Jonah's knowledge of God and how God was likely to move comes into play in his decision making to run, but it also comes into play later in the story. Jonah perceives that God is pursuing him and sends that storm as judgment upon his running in the opposite direction. It seems really, really self-centered for us, but he seems to have been right because the sea becomes calm when the crew throws him overboard. And then he's swallowed by that great fish, and he's unsure of his fate. God has done this to him. But he does something in that time, in that period when he is inside of the fish that is crucial for us. It's important for us not to miss in Jonah's story or in ours. In the belly of the fish, he turns towards God. He has been running away ever since this story has been shared with us in Scripture. But at that moment, he turns toward God inside of the fish. Even though God has been the primary one moving towards him all along, even in judgment, pursuing him in the storm and in the actions of the fish, now Jonah leans towards God in prayer. I don't know, I surely hope that we don't ever experience God in the same kinds of ways where God's movement as to be swallowed by a fish or thrown into the sea. But Jonah's response in this moment is worth reflecting upon. When Jonah was surely at his end, when he could have resigned himself to his inevitable demise, he turned back to God. He knew. Remember, he knew that God was prone to giving second and maybe third and maybe fourth and fifth many, many chances. Our God is a God of many chances. And Jonah knew and he hoped that that would be true for him in this fishy predicament. When Jonah prayed to God, did his prayer save him? Or did God already have plans to spit him out onto dry land. What we do know is that God reoriented Jonah. He never made it to Tarshish. He was spit out into a situation where Nineveh and God's call was again right before him. And when he, when he comes out of that fish, Jonah receives again that call from God. He receives again, for a second time in this story, 
that command to go and do that thing that God would have him do. I wonder if we are ever placed in a similar situation where God has this thing for us and God calls us, commands us, tells us where and when and what that thing is he wants us to do and we resist that. Maybe we don't run in the opposite direction, but maybe we we don't move in the way that God intends. Sometimes we, we don't follow those commands. Sometimes we view the call God places upon us not as, as, a, as a duty, as something we need to be obedient to, but we, we view it as suggestion, as a proposal that God has presented before us, as an option on the menu of our life, rather than God's will for us. Sometimes, like Jonah, we do. We run away. And sometimes, though, I can't say that God sends these sorts of judgments upon us as it seems to be presented in the story, but sometimes, like Jonah, we do, because of our living, because of our life, because of all sorts of different circumstances, we may find our place scary and dark and lonely, like like the belly of a fish, a place of predicament. A place where we feel like there may not be a way out. I wonder if in those moments and in those places we remember, we remember how God is. That God is prone to give us another chance. I wonder if we pray as Jonah did in that moment that God would give him another chance, that God would deliver us. Or do we resign ourselves to whatever whatever has befallen us? What questions stir in our heads and our hearts in those times? Am I ever going to make it out of this? Why didn't I just listen? What can I do? And is there anything I can do to make it right? Have you ever had those questions in a moment of darkness? A moment where you felt lost. Thankfully, our God, our God is Jonah's God. Our God actually went through three days in the belly of the beast, and and then he rose again in Jesus Christ and in the resurrection. We have a God of many, many chances. How is God reorienting us today? How has God spit us out into places where we might hear that thing that he wants us to do once again? Will we run again? Will we hide? Or will we go? Let's close in prayer. Almighty God, we thank you for for having a thing for us to do. Enable us to hear your voice and and to be faithful to your command, to your direction, to your will upon us as individuals and as a church family. Guide us and direct us and use us to do something meaningful and holy in this world that you love. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen.
In peace, let us pray to the Lord. As I end each petition with Lord in your mercy, I invite you to respond, hear our prayer. O God, we pray for your holy church, that it may be filled with truth and love, and be found without fault at the day of your coming. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God, we pray for our bishop. We pray for all the ministers within our conference, for all our partner churches in this region, and especially for those churches in our town and those with whom we share in ministry together. We pray for all the people of God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, we pray for all who fear, and we pray for all those who are overcome with anxiety at this time. Bring them healing and hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Especially this day, O oh God, as we read the story of Jonah, we pray for those who do not yet believe, for those who have lost their faith. We pray that you might use us and others to share your gospel message. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the peace of the world, O God, that there might be a spirit of respect and unity that grows among nations and peoples. We especially pray for those divisions which exist within our own community and with our own country. We pray that you might bring healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all with whose lives we are connected, for all who live and work in this community. We lift them up to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer, all who are in danger. We pray that they may be protected and freed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our enemies and those who wish us harm, for all whom we have injured or judged. We lift them up to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Rejoicing in the fellowship that we enjoy in our worship together, both physically and virtually, we pray for one another that you might continue to grow in us and develop a discipleship that pleases you. All these prayers we lift up in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
O oh God, we delight in your desire to bring forth healing in the midst of all the challenges that we face. We thank you for the opportunity we have to be connected to one another and offer strength in times of need. Today, O oh God, we lift up the Carlson family. We pray for the upcoming transplant procedure for John Eric. We pray for all the, the things that have happened leading up to this point and the ways that your will has led them. We pray for each member of this family as they care for one another and, and circle around you and around your healing agents. We pray for the, the hands and hearts of the physicians and the nursing staff and all those who will walk with them through this time. Grant them safety as they travel, and grant them the opportunity to be a living witness for you and for your power and for the ways that you have given us the gift of healing in our world. Use these shawls as a reminder that they are not alone, that you are with them, and that there are many others who circle around them in prayer and to care for them and offer up support in this time. All these prayers we offer in the healing name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The word of God came to Jonah, and the word of God comes to us. Go, despite your fears, speak the truth of God. Love your neighbor and your enemy. Forgive as you have been forgiven. Receive grace upon grace overflowing from the fullness of God.